What's up, everybody? Welcome to a super special holiday episode of Community Voices. Today, very special guest, Bachelor Zone. Like, I don't, I don't even have the superlatives to describe him. But like, ladies, man, chivalrous, <laughs> gentlemanly, man. We got Matt James in the building. Matt, how you feeling? I feel honored to be here, bro. I appreciate y'all reaching out and allowing me to, to share my piece. Yeah, of course, man. I appreciate you taking the time out, too, especially during the holidays, so. All I right. just got back, yeah, just got back to my hometown, Raleigh, North Carolina. I was down in Georgia visiting my girl's family. So uh, it's, it finally feels like like the holidays. It finally feels like Christmas being back home. Oh, the snow. Well, I don't know if it's snow in Raleigh, but, you know, it's Christmas trees and all that good stuff. So, Christmas trees, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Let's jump right into it. So how did you get involved with ABC Food Tours? So I guess for me, it starts back when I was in high school, well, even before high school, um, my, my parents' situation. So like, mm -hmm. um, I feel like a lot of people, um, I didn't grow up in a traditional family. Like I didn't have a mom, a dad, white picket fence. My parents got divorced before I can remember. And um, I just remember seeing kids experience life differently than I did. So like, whether that was, you know, having the Jordans when we go to ba basketball practice or, uh, their parents coming to pick them up from practice and just very observant on things that like I there there was I felt like life should go a certain way. And then I looked at my life and I'm like, why isn't my life like everyone else's life? Right. And um, fast forward to high school, um, I and, and that experience left me like like my childhood. I felt like I missed out on things. And I'm like, if I'm ever in a position where I can bless people or be a blessing and and be involved to make sure that that kids, students, whoever that are in my position don't miss out on the things that I feel like uh, stimulate growth and build confidence and and people skills, like I, the things that are really important that I missed out on growing up. And so, uh, as I got older, I looked for opportunities to volunteer, give back, just like work in the community. So I did that in high school. Um, this uh, program called Peppy, where we would go to different elementary schools and we work with special needs classes. We work with um, some, uh, we'd work with other classes in the building that just go through different athletic games, sports games, uh, study buddies. We'd read to them. X, Y, Z, any time, any way we could get involved. Same thing when I got to college. Uh, when I, I played football at Wake Forest University, and our athletic department had a bunch of amazing programs where we would go out into the community. We did Santa's helpers where Santa's helpers, where we would dress up as Santa Claus and go to the very low income areas of Winston Salem and give out gifts to families that had no other means of getting gifts. We'd have students come on campus and we'd show them um, what it was like to spend a day in the life with an athlete. It was called eat with the Deeks. So yeah. they would go to class with us. They go to practice with us. They go to study hall, they go to our dorms. And then at the end of the day, we would share a meal together and it wasn't like anything crazy, like a lobster yeah. steak. It was pizza. It was just <laughs> yeah. pizza. And, and any college kid, any kid is going to love free food. But like for a lot of these students, it was their first time ever having pizza before. And right. like pizza, I mean, that's pretty universal. Like it's not, I don't feel like very hard to, to ever have a slice of pizza, especially yeah. living in New York now. Yeah. yeah. You know, exactly. The pizza anyway, all right. Any exactly. every corner is just like, yeah. So when they had this meal, they were going crazy. Mm -hmm. They're like, yo, this is how it looks on TV. Right. Like they were <laughs> so stoked to have this pizza. And I'm like, how is it possible that this such a simple act of kindness, like sharing a meal with somebody, sparks such genuine uh energy from these students that also allow them to open up about their life? Like they're they start talking about what they aspire to be, who they aspire to be, what they want in life, their situations. And like these like table side conversations spark such stimulating conversation for myself and everyone else involved that when I didn't have that outlet anymore at Wake Forest to have those conversations, continue to do those things. So yeah. this is a long winded answer, how I got involved with ABC Food Tour. So when I moved to New York, like two years after I graduated and stopped playing football or three years after, um, I was spending a lot of time in these in these neighborhoods that um, had some of the best food I've ever had in my entire life. And there are students and families in these neighborhoods that couldn't afford to eat there. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, it reminded me of my situation in Winston-Salem. I'm like, what can I do 
to bridge the gap between these families and these restaurants, knowing that when that Brett, when that gap is bridged, the conversations that come from those experiences, uh, the, the knowledge they're going to take away from the restaurant owners, uh, the time that myself as a, as, a, as a college graduate, as someone who's aspiring to do things in their community, uh, how meaningful that conversation is going to be to them, seeing a person of color, uh, all of our students are black, uh, yeah. Spanish, uh, a lot of them are first generation Americans. So um, seeing myself in their community, meeting these restauranteurs who didn't go to college, who English is their second language, like it's meaningful, it's impactful for them. So again, to get back to your question, my involvement with ABC Food Tours, I just wanted to bridge gaps and connect people. Yeah. Uh, and I thought how meaningful it was uh, as I matured and I saw and I wish I had those things when I was growing up, the conversations, the connection with, with yeah. uh, black uh, um, mentors, with people who were uh, doing things uh, to further themselves in the community. Yeah. And uh, it's incredible how far we've come with engaging those types of communities in New York City and beyond. You know, we've, we've had tours all across the country and, and even London, uh, like um, outside the country. So yeah. uh, my involvement, them from the lack of that experience as a youth, my involvement in college with uh, with minorities that didn't have um, resources, and then my responsibility I felt as someone who you know lived the lives of these students that we work with to give give back and pay it forward. Definitely, and I feel you for sure, especially growing up like in the South Bronx, and you know you see like McDonald's or Burger King on the corner all the time, and it's cheap and accessible but you want to experience that fine dining and things like that, that you find right. like the low East side. So, and things like that. That's why I always right. look forward to like restaurant week because you'd be able to experience those four or five star restaurants for like $35, you know what I mean? During exactly. like a week. So definitely understand, especially the importance of nutrition too, and what you put into your body as well. And I understand, I see the vision. I understand it for sure. And uh, Omar, when you're traveling, think about it. Like mm -hmm. the first thing I do when I travel somewhere, like, I ask either Instagram, Twitter, like people I know from those areas, where do I need to go to eat? Yeah. And, and like, that's like a spark. So many conversations. Oh, you need to go here. You need to try this, try that. Like think about someone asking you where they should go to eat and you not yeah. literally having nothing. Like, I yeah. don't know where to go to tell you because I eat all my meals with my family of 10 that lives in this one bedroom apartment. I right. don't know what it's like to eat something that's not fast food. Yeah. Like that thought to me is like, crazy it's crazy mm -hmm. so so tell me about your relationship with like tyler cameron and how you guys you know created that vision and put together abc right so uh tyler and i went to college together and i was actually the first person that tyler met on campus so uh tyler is like a freak athlete he was the quarterback at wake forest uh he, he graduated high school early uh, uh so his 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 uh so you've got two semesters you got your fall and your spring so mm -hmm. after the fall semester of his high school year he he forewent his soft uh his spring semester and he came to wake forest a semester early so that he could learn the playbook get adjusted yeah. and like hopefully get that starting role as the quarterback at wake forest um i was the first person he met when he got on campus he lived in my dorm and we just <laughs> sparked it off instantly like nice. like the, I had never met anybody from Florida until I got to college and like their demeanor, their mentality was so much different than anybody that I had grown up with or around. Like he was so cultured, the experiences that he had, the heart that he had, like he didn't see, he saw people as people, right? Like he, there was no judgment. He was just a man of the people. And I felt that instantly. Like he was such a genuine person that he clicked right in with our group uh, of, it was like myself, Kevin Johnson, who was a corner, Michael Campanera, who was a receiver. Uh, we had like a little pack that would do everything together. And as uh, this guy coming in as a quarterback, like he, he, you want to be on good terms with the quarterback. Yeah, was, <laughs> with the rock. Right. <laughs> you know, he was, uh, we, we just had a good time. Like it started yeah. out us traveling to different colleges together and, um, just experiencing that college life, like what yeah. it was like to be away from home. And mm -hmm. uh, we just built a friendship outside of football because to be honest with you, 
neither one of us excelled at Wake Forest. Like it wasn't until my senior year that I had like I saw the legitimate time on the field. And yeah. then Tyler transferred to he graduated and then transferred to FAU, which is close to his home in Jupiter, Florida. And he yeah. was balling out there as a tight end. So he switched positions and wow. switched conferences before he really saw the success that like everyone saw for him uh, in high school. So to answer your question, like my relationship with Tyler was as a friend before a teammate. And yeah. then when I saw his heart and I met his mom and his dad and his brother and saw what they were about, it was a no brainer. Him participating in those same, uh, him participating in those same uh, programs that were being provided by um, our athletic department. He yep. had a heart for the community like I did, and uh, it, it just made sense that once both of us moved to New York, that we um, we put our heads together and, yeah. and got back out in the community. Right, and it's a beautiful thing when you guys just gravitate to each other just naturally without any like, you know things happening and nothing like, you know, he does this. So let me get his good side. Like it was, it just sounds like it was just love. And I just came together. It's, that's the only way it's going to work. It's the yeah. only way. There, no ego involved. The the sole goal of, of us creating ABC food tours was for the kids. Yeah. And when everyone's single-minded and not selfish and focused on the same thing and everyone can put their egos aside, that's how we get work done. And that's why we've been able to impact so many students in New York. Yeah. So go through some highlights of yours from like 2021 and what we could look forward to in 2022. Ooh, highlights of 2021. Yeah, highlights. Um, I would say, I would say overcoming obstacles, you know, perseverance. Uh, all the odds were stacked against me at one point with the current late I'm in mm -hmm. uh, and you know we fought through that and we prevailed through uh, you know what people uh, think we should and shouldn't do and you know taking that mentality and mantra into every other aspect of my life so this nice. work that we do with our students like um, a highlight with the with uh, ABC Food Tours 2021 was introducing them to hydroponic farming and introducing mm -hmm. them to crypto uh, I like my inch my personal interest to run in tandem with the students because I want to be putting them on game. And if I'm not right. talking to them about things that I think are important and are going to change the way that the world works, then who's going to talk to them about it? Yeah. We don't have curriculums yeah. in place to talk about Bitcoin, to talk about yeah. mining, talk about cryptocurrency, talk about hydroponic farming. Um, so I take those things into account when we're interacting with these students. What's the best way I can spend time with these students? And for me, it's educating them on, on where the world's going. And uh, that was a highlight was introducing them uh, to those two things and building out cur curriculums to focus on um, educating them and their families on uh, how to benefit from these things and, and putting them in positions to be successful. Absolutely. And it's great that you're bringing up like the hydroponic farming and like the crypto because those things are just like real. Like I wish I put even a dollar in Bitcoin like 10 years ago. Right, right. Yeah, and people just get real skeptical about it, and you see how it's a real thing, and even down to like NFTs and things like that, and just like digital is looking like it's the the way of the future. So you definitely want to get the kids ingrained in it from like a young age, and you know these curriculums you put together are definitely you know putting that work in for them, so they could get like yeah, because expand their mind and just really take into account those things that are really you know building you know tomorrow's future. Yeah, exactly. Like being from North Carolina. Um, we refer to it down here as the good old boys club. Yeah. And that is a, a group of, you know, predominantly uh, white people who um, are the figureheads of a bunch of different organizations and thought leaders. And, you know, they, everybody's rubbing each other's backs yeah. and everyone, they have everyone's in, interests in mind. And a lot of the times minorities are left out of those conversations because they're not at those tables. Right. So, um, if, if, if you're not having someone like myself who, uh, or any advocate who's a minority for the people who have no voice, then how are they ever going to hear about these opportunities? And on top of starting conversations about crypto, um, hydroponic farming, we're bringing people to the forefront of these conversations who, um, are thought leaders in, in New York. The, yeah. the thing I love about New York city is it's so diverse. It's a melting pot. 
it had you have access to every single industry you can imagine agriculture tech banking uh uh, uh engineer anything you could think of you can do <laughs> in new york so tapping the people in those industries and bringing them onto our food tours so that our students can meet these people and have engaged in conversations and by the end of it you know someone who said they want to be a rapper and be an nba player is like being a civil engineer sounds like a lot of fun. Like, what do yeah. I need to do? What do I need to do to get into engineering? Or, yeah. uh, oh, investment banking? Like, what do I need to do to learn more about finance? What do I need to do to learn more about personal finance? Oh, you're in, you're in coding? Like, how do I learn how to code at this age? So it's like, just by spending time, it's like osmosis. It's like, just because you're there, you're just soaking, like these students are soaking it in. And yeah. that's our goal. It's just to connect people and not to change anybody's perception and tell them they should do X, Y, Z. It's just expose them to these things. Like we want our students to do whatever they want to do. But yeah. I have, I have, I'm under the impression that the more, you know, the better you'll do. So if they, if they have exposure to all of these things, then maybe they'll have more choices to make aside from, I want to be X, Y, Z. Like yeah. there's nothing wrong with aspiring to be a barber. There's nothing wrong with aspiring to be a rapper. There's nothing wrong to be aspiring to be a, a athlete. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, if you've never spoken to a lawyer, then how do you know you wouldn't want to be a lawyer? How do you, how do you know you wouldn't want to be a doctor? And we're but bringing the it's just that one spark in your head, like, damn, like that actually sounds pretty fun. Let me lock in on that instead of you know doing something that you're you might like, but you know circumstances makes you feel like you have to do this. Whereas like those conversations you're having with like different people from like STEM, for example, for example, and just opening your mind and just like you know a light bulb switching on, like whoop, and I like this instead, and you know locking in on that. And Omar, especially if that doctor that you're meeting mm -hmm. is is a woman of color, right? Who's who's a first generation American, mm -hmm. who's, uh, whose English is her second language, just mm -hmm. like you. Like these these women, these young women and young men are meeting people who look like them, yeah. who are doing things in their communities that are changing the landscape of not only their family but their their family's family. So it's like Next when generation. they see themselves in these positions, they're mm -hmm. aspiring to be it. But if I'm looking at someone who doesn't look like me, do things that I think aren't obtainable, then I'm not going to I'm not going to aspire to be the president because I've never seen a black president. I'm not going to aspire to be a CEO because I don't see black CEOs. You know what I mean? But, you know, we're part of that culture that's changing mm -hmm. the way our generation thinks. And it's a beautiful that's thing. Good. Definitely. Definitely. And I also hear you're an author as well. You have a book coming out. I do. Yeah. I do. I have a book coming out. I um, there was a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of things that I felt were left um, un, unanswered in, you know, my experience on, on TV. And that's how a lot of people know me. Yeah. And I'm thankful and grateful for that. But um, without the whole story, um, you know, it's hard to, uh, it's hard for someone to understand where I'm coming from and yeah. why I make the decisions I make. And so I wanted to give people a holistic review of my life and dive into the things that we just scratched the surface on. So yeah, yeah that, that book's coming out in, um, in May. So mm -hmm. um, I'll be dropping little antidotes throughout the course of 2022 and the beginning of the year, just to tease different yeah. parts of it. Um, but I'm excited to share more of my life with everybody because yeah. there's, there's a lot left to tell. Right. And you're not just solely the bachelor, you know I mean? You're Matt James, like there's much more Matt James is just like the TV and you know the woman the dating and things like that so exactly like that was a chapter in my life just mm -hmm. like uh you know I'm not, i don't want to speak for anybody i don't know but let's talk about um uh lebron james like he's one of the greatest basketball players to ever play and mm -hmm. when he's done playing basketball he will do other things outside of basketball and he's already doing those things he has a production mm -hmm. company he has an agency he's written books he's done movies. so it's like we, we like to put people in boxes because it's easier for us to accept those people um and not just athletes but anybody's uh the, a bus driver um someone who's waiting on you at the restaurant like yeah. like they could be a musician they could be doing a lot of different things we like to to categorize people and put them in a box because it's easier for us to accept and to navigate those people it's hard for us to conceptualize that someone can be more than one thing yeah. and excel at other things you know what i mean so um yeah i just i don't i don't want to i'm not one for stereotypes and i like to break uh 
I like to break the molds whenever I can to, yeah. to let people know that they're dimensional. You know, there's a, there's a lot more to people than meets the eye. And when you yeah. take a chance, when you take a second to get to know people, it just opens up a whole world of possibilities. You know, when you start sure. asking questions, um, when you start asking questions and you're vulnerable, then you put yourself in a position to accept blessings and be a blessing to somebody else. Definitely. For sure. And last question for you. So I'm sure all the girls, all the fans want to know how life was like on The Bachelor and how life is, you know, post-Bachelor. So <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually crazy, Omar. Like when you like when you're going through the experience in real time, yeah. like you're experiencing it different than how America is going to experience it. Right. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. like it would be like us having this conversation and then it being played back six months from now or four months from yeah. now, you'd be like, wait, I don't remember it going like that. Or like, you know what I mean? It's like, like man, that really happened. Like <laughs> right. And like, there's things that go on that you have no, like that you're not privy to because you're in the moment. Like yeah. it was, it was a lot of fun in the moment, but watching it back was a little stressful knowing mm -hmm. that you're in a relationship and um, you're watching like yourself with other women and telling these women things. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's weird. Like there's no way around it. Like it's so <laughs> weird. It's like, the craziest social experiment ever yeah. but thank god like it worked out for me you know i ended up with an amazing woman uh who's resilient and we've been going strong like once we took our relationship outside of uh you know that that space and like we focus on real life and not the internet and what people want us to do and how people want us to think like we're great like we have a great relationship we have a great life because we don't get bogged down in things that aren't important. And like, it's hard not to when um, you've been in these spaces where everyone has an opinion on what you should do, how you should act, what you should say. Mm -hmm. You just got to focus on each other. And that's what we do. We just check in with each other. How are you feeling? What's going on? What's on your mind? Just open lines of communication. And life's been great, bro. Like, Beautiful. life has been great. Yeah. And again, like, you know, watching the show while you're with your lady and it's like, all that stuff happened before y'all even, you know, a thing or together. So it's just like, yeah. you, can't, you know, exactly, you bro. Everyone's it was, and you know, look for yeah. just living a moment and just living it now. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's got, uh, everybody's got an opinion and 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 a view on what you should be doing. Yeah. Um, and you've got to keep in mind. This gets back to the book. It's like people only have a perception of you on what they've seen on TV. Yeah. So I can't even be mad at people when they're upset with X, Y, Z because they're only shown X, Y, Z. Yeah. So I try to be as patient as I can, knowing that, you know, there's not a full story that's being told. Right. Like there's there's so much more to everybody. Like whenever I see something on TV now, it's like you see a headline. It's like Amon Shumpert says that LeBron James ruined the NBA. It's like, well, mm -hmm. if you actually listen to listen, him, yeah, you, yeah. it was praising LeBron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Like, you know what I mean? So people say things and do things that fit a narrative that they want to put across, but you just have to take the time to do your own research. And, um, you know, the truth typically comes out in that. For sure. Wise words, man. But again, <laughs> Matt, thank you so much for the time. Omar, thank you, brother. This has been great. I appreciate you. Yeah, one of my one of my favorite ones today. I think we've done like 60 something episodes straight each week. 60 one episodes? My, yeah, man. We've had big time people like yourself. Um, who else? Kelly Rowland, Carmelo, D. Wade. Yeah, Melo? Yeah. Chris Paul, Mello? a bunch of people, yeah. Yeah, so it's a pleasure. It's, it's our honor to add you to the list as well, so. Oh, thank you, brother. Yeah. What, what was Melo talking about? Oh, at that time, we were talking about voting. So we had okay. all three of them at the same time. We just, like, okay. you know, asking each other questions about stuff, so. That's a New York legend right there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I want to take up too much of your time, so. Again, thank you so much. Absolutely, bro. I appreciate you and keep doing this, brother. I, I, uh, I'm looking forward to, to what's in store for you uh, in 2022. Likewise, same for you.